So this is section 813, and we're going to create a polynomial equation from a graph. So we're going to create a polynomial from a graph. Boom! Now, we can express a polynomial in this form. Now, this is an important form to realize. Now, what this says is there could be some coefficient a, and then the rest are all of these linear factors x minus where it crosses, x minus where it crosses, x minus where it crosses. And to create our polynomial, we're going to have to start with this form. Now, we don't have to eventually multiply everything through. That's not necessary. Leaving it in that factored form is OK. But there are two issues here. The first issue is we need to find this a, right? Because I, I know what these are. That's where it crosses the x. That's where it crosses the x. That's where it crosses the x. But how do I find this value? Well, what we need to do is we have to plug in a point on our graph, and we plug in that x and y value in. So we plug in for y. You plug in for x. And then now you've set up an equation in which you can get a by itself. The second is does multiplicity affect our graph? The answer is yes. So we need to take into consideration how that graph intera uh, interacts with the zeros when we're constructing our polynomial. Now all we need to do is just construct a polynomial in the lowest order. Now what I mean by that is like you know technically when it crosses through I could say it's you know to the third power or to the fifth power or to the seventh power. I could say all those things but we know we don't need to worry about that. We just need to focus on constructing it to the lowest degree. So let's look at this first example here. I notice that my graph crosses through, crosses through, and crosses through. So that means that I know that my multiplicity here, it's odd, because on all of them it crosses through. And so I can construct it that way. So I have y equals a times now x minus my first zero. So that looks like that's negative 3, so that's going to be x plus 3. And then I have it crosses here, so it's x minus 0, which is x. Because right here it crosses, which is 0, so x minus 0. Well, x minus 0 is x. And then it crosses here, that's going to be x minus 2. And so now I have this constructed. So now the second step is what I need to do is I need to find what this a is. So to find the a, I have to plug in a point. Well, it gives me one right here. That point is negative 2, 8. So I'm going to plug in 8 for y and negative 2 for every single x. And now I just need to simplify this. So I get 8 equals a times 1 times negative 2 times negative 4. So multiplying those, that's going to give me 8. Divide both sides by 8. I get a equals 1. So now writing my polynomial, I can say f of x, or I can say y. Well, it's just going to be 1, so I just have x plus 3 times x, times x minus 2. I could also just put the x in front. But that right there, that's my polynomial. My a is 1. We don't need to write the 1 there, right? 1x. So any of these ways of writing our polynomial, those two at the bottom, that's going to be correct. Now, just note that if, let's just say it bounced, right? Let's say if it bounced at the 0, that means I have two of them because my multiplicity has to be even, and so I would say that I have two of them. So it'd be like x minus my 0 squared, or x minus 2 times x minus 2, whatever's easier for you. So let's look at another one. Now I know it's a little off here, but the way that it does the points, it's we're OK. So y equals a times x, well this one is 3, so x plus 3. We have x again, and then here, 
that's x minus 2. So it's always x minus your 0. So x minus negative 3, the negatives become positive. x minus 0. And then we have x minus 2. All right. So now I need to find my a. So to do that, I'm going to plug in a point. So uh, I guess this one looks easiest, right? That's one. I know it looks a little off. It's not supposed to be, but that's looks like that's one five. So let's plug in one five. So five equals a times one plus three times one times one minus two. And so I get five equals a four times one times negative one. And I get 5 equals a times negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. So I get 5 over negative 4 equals a. So now plugging that back into my polynomial, I get y equals negative 5 over 4. x, I'll put this one first, and then x plus 3, and then x minus 2. Now you don't have to put that first, it is nicer. It looks better. It could also say that this is f of x. But I construct a polynomial. You plug in a point that it gives you. And then you find what that a is. All right, this next one. So now this one is a little different. This one is a little different. Um, so if you notice, it rebounds here. So because it does rebound there, that means my multiplicity is even. So we have to pay attention to that when we construct it. So I only have two zeros here. So I have a times x plus 2. But because it needs to rebound, I'm going to say squared. Now my multiplicity is even. And then I have x minus 1. And so now I need to pick a point. It looks like I can use this one. That's a nice even one where my x is 0 and my y is 8. So then 8 equals a times 0 plus 2 squared times 0 minus 1. 8 equals times 4 times negative 1. 8 equals a times negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. You get a equals negative 2. And so now, plugging that back in, y equals negative 2 times x plus 2 squared times x minus 1. And that's going to be our answer. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, why can't I just say x plus 2 to the 4th or x plus 2 to the 6th? Technically, you could, right? Because we're just trying to create the polynomial in the lead. Uh, you know, we're just creating a polynomial, right? This is very vague. We're just creating a polynomial from this graph, but we just want to be careful with the idea that you're just creating more work for you, right? If you did x plus 2 to the 4th, that's just more work. x plus 2 to the 8th, that's just more work. So just put it in the lowest order, which just means the least capacity that you need to make it, and that's good enough. Alrighty, so let's close today's lesson. What did we learn today? Well, we created a polynomial from a graph. Now as a recap, what do we need to know to sketch a polynomial? Remember, y-intercept, the zeros with its respected multiplicity, and the end behavior. And then a sign chart is a mapping where the polynomial is above the x-axis and below the x-axis. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.